So now it is a delight to uh, bring to you Kate Collins. She's the CEO of Powerful Journey Consulting. She's a speaker, a trainer, and a recovered burned out leader. With an extensive background in counseling and being hand picked to train with Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul, and the Success Principles author. She's helped thousands of leaders and their teams across North America be healthier and more successful. Kate helps develop resilient leaders who want to build engaged teams, resulting in healthier cultures. And her heart sings when she's facilitating a team or a woman's retreat. Please join me with a resounding welcome with emojis and in the chat and welcome Kate Collins to the summit. Thank you. So glad to be here, Ravi. So delighted to have you. And I should mention, if you've got any questions for Kate through this uh, session, please, uh, you can see on the right, the, the default is the chat, but there's a Q&A tab. You can just type it in there and that, that'll let me spot the questions if they pop up. Kate, welcome. Thank you, Ravi. So great to be here and hang out with you, my friend. It is always a pleasure. Now, the what we want to bring to to people too is uh, your book uh, and your insights from that, which is a great hands-on guide. It's not just a book you read. You've got exercises throughout, so you can, you know, you really need to make the time right. to do the exercises. And, and I, I believe, am I right? And and read okay. it at that pace. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And so one of the things that jumped out to me this time I was going through your book uh, was a section where you asked, how do you give your power away? And I mean, you, you are about the powerhouse in you. But one thing, I, let me ch check that about this, that one of the things I've discovered is that the key driver of resilience is personal power, the sense of control over yourself and the environment around you. And so it's sort of, do you have that sense of personal power or is it powerlessness? Is And what I'd like to get into is how do people give their power and therefore the resilience away? Right. So again, for me, again, also I'm a, I'm a Pilates instructor. So it's all about sort of that core conditioning, the core meaning, again, the power uh, within us. And so whether simple things, I was just catching myself even with my own body language. So just making sure, you know, again, simple things like I'm sitting, how I'm standing, uh, either elicits me owning my power or in fact, giving it away. And so simple things that happen when we give away our power, uh, we actually lose sight of who we are. When we give away our power in, in situations like where I say when I really feel no, when I say no, when I really feel yes, when in fact, maybe I'm accepting unacceptable behavior. Maybe I keep making excuses. Well, you know, they're under a lot of stress and they've got this going on and that going on. However, there's a pattern that this is how this individual responds to other people or perhaps in stress. We give our power away when we don't have clear boundaries for sure. Uh, so there's no sense of this is my space, this is your space. We give away our power for sure, Ravi, when um, we pretend. Yeah, when we pretend. And I think that each of us does a little bit of lies throughout our life where, you know, whether it's the guilt gift or it's the guilt trip that, you know, we have to visit somebody or whatever. I think that's all part of it. However, we give our power away and sometimes it's just so subtle. It's to me, uh, the best way I would describe it is, it's like all of a sudden fog coming in underneath the door in your bedroom when you're sleeping, and all of a sudden the whole room is full. And so how did this happen? So it's increments. So I'm a firm believer, I love Jim Rohn's quote, about how I do some things is how I do everything. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, for me, when I think back to how I really got into and in creating Powerful Journey, my company, uh, it really was, quite frankly, to be transparent, it was from a burnout. I was um, severely burnout. I had I was a family children's counselor for 15 years. And here's the thing. <laughs> it wasn't the people I was supporting. It was the bureaucracy that was really difficult to be around. 
uh, you know, the one that flew over the cuckoo's nest. It's kind of like, well, which ones are the patients? Uh, and so I think, <laughs> I think for me, what happened was it really, um, uh, I kept kind of naively, you know, the advocate in me, the truth teller in me kept going, right. When you're asking me, what do I think? I naively would come to the table and go, well, this is what I think. And then I would continuously be told, or we would be told collectively, no, 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 no. This is, this is how it's going to be. It's like, right, this is a game we're playing. I was a little bit of a slow learner, truthfully, Rob, I was. And I, what, I, what I did was I gave my power away because you see, I love the phrase my mom always says, is this the hill you want to die on? And you see, right. I made every hill. So parting our power away is not just standing in our power. It can also be about how I'm stepping into that ring, so to speak, and making everything an issue uh, as a result where it's now taking my energy. It's like a psychic vampire. Those people all have them in our life where we think, oh my gosh, why did I call them? Why did I even think that they could show up for me? Um, and so really giving away our power is really how we know about it is that we often feel fatigued. We may be some resentment brewing inside. Perhaps it's we just, our confidence gets hit time and time and time again. And uh, the other thing I wanna say too, because I had the really good fortune to be trained by a shaman for a year. And what he said, which was very powerful was that not only do you give away your power, but you also rob others of their power. And I was like, whoa, yes. what's that all about, right? And so being able to become consciously aware, and I know we're gonna get into a little bit uh, that later about mindful leadership. And it's really, for me anyway, it's, it's about where in fact am I hinting rather than being direct about what I need? Where am I even manipulating outright, either consciously or subconsciously? Where am I, in fact, um, I guess I would say, you know, maybe I'm, again, a lot of people right now are struggling, you know, obviously from a mental health perspective. And so sometimes we let our hair down when we're at home with people that we love the most or that's within our inner circle. And so where am I, in fact, robbing them of their power? In other words, Am I over supporting them? I am, am I in fact enabling them rather than like, am I harming them versus helping them? And I think that's something, and you and I've talked about this before that this time, this unprecedented time in history is an opportunity for a serious reset for us. It's also an opportunity for a rebirth. I really, really feel that a lot of people now are stepping off the stress treadmill and they're saying, you know what? I don't really like that life I have back here, or I like some parts of it, but there's other parts that I was giving my power away continuously by not setting any boundaries, by not being true to myself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, wow, there's so much in all of that, I, uh, that that I'd like to dive into. The, you know, when you talk about the energy vampires, I, 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 I see all these things that you mentioned, the guilt trips of this as almost mm -hmm. like it, it is like leeching off our power, leeching Good off, and that's where the resilience goes, right? Uh -huh. and, and when you talk about those friends, I mean, one of the things I advocate is there are friends you have to fight. Yes. I have no space for energy vampires. And, and to me, it's a sign of respect for them. You want to be like that? Totally respect your choice. Have mm -hmm. fun over there. Not in my it life. Um, but... The other thing, one of those, when you talked about healthy boundaries, that is something in the last year, I think for a lot of people that has just gone, it's been totally blown up. Boundaries are gone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, for me, Ravi, what, what I'm uh, experiencing now, as I was sharing earlier, is that I'm really thrilled with organizations now that are saying, we don't want to just hire you for one thing, Kate, for the training. We want to hire you actually for the individual coaching. And that part is really big because with my extended background in mental health and the mental health crisis that we're in, I'm loving that I'm just getting this, you know, just just show up for them, Kate. And no one's giving me all these, these are the, all the deliverables you need to share with me. This is the ROI I expect by the end of this. They're just saying, hey, just please support them, support them. I'm concerned about retention. I'm concerned about resiliency. I'm concerned about their mental health right now. Yeah. And so what I'm finding, which is interesting, uh, Ravi, is that probably three quarters or a little bit more 
are focusing on their personal lives. And what we're aware of is more people now, particularly in Ontario, you know, where now most people are working from home. And mm-hmm. so where do I begin and where do I end? So my kiddos maybe are out in the other room. They're doing online, depending on their age. They may be independent. They may not be. Um, so people are pulling their hair out saying, you know, I have to get work done at 11 o'clock at night or I have to, you know, do whatever. I mean, we know now through research that in many ways, women in particular have taken a step back and st- mm-hmm. instead of moving continuously moving forward, what we're finding is more women are more exhausted, more burnout, because now they've had to jump into the parenting, the teacher, the mediator, the coach, <laughs> you know, all of this happening. And what we need to do is have clearer boundaries. And this is where I have a family and children's counseling background. I really do believe we need to start having those family meetings, even if it's a meeting of one. (laughs) Um, And just to talk about what's working, you know, what's working, what's not working, and what do we need to eliminate? So what I've certainly certainly with some of the, uh, the leaders that I've worked with is that, so let's take a look at what needs to happen to make your family run smoothly. So whether it's the chores or the meals or the, you know, uh, TV time or, you know, technology time. And let's get clear about how do you want your family to, to, to be during this time? So let's fast forward. I'm a huge fan of let's take the end, you know, the goal end goal and work backwards. So obviously we want to have a sense of connection and and meaningful connection. We want to be able to use our, our well-being and our sense of, uh, certainly our physical well-being and our emotional well-being and our and our mental well-being is intact in fact possibly even thriving so part of that with the with the family meetings is it's to really do that check-in to say you know i'm seeing there's technology coming to the the table when we eat i'm noticing that you know uh, when we go to bed I, i'd like it back to where we put the technology in the bowl prior to going into our rooms that part's really important because i noticed some of you are struggling with sleep um, those kinds of things and what i'm finding with leaders now they are working harder than they have ever worked in their entire life because it's that giving ourselves permission right giving ourselves permission to turn off our phones turn off the technology to say, this is it. This is now my time. This is my family time. This is the time that I need to just be able to make it about me. And it all starts with a simple decision. It all starts with a simple decision. And the decision is, I deserve to have some me time. I deserve to have um, this relaxing time. See, we're so hooked up to our technology that we are, we think that we have to be on all the time. There's this illusion that everything is important and it really is. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're, happy, if you're here, you're a lung surgeon and you, you know, it's a matter of, oh my gosh, I, I just dropped the lung on the floor. I get it, be on call. We want you to make sure, you know, in the cooler or whatever they put that, I guess that's the heart, isn't it? Where they put it in the cooler and they keep it <laughs> um, But for me, it's a matter of really, uh, when, I, when we're an autopilot, Ravi, we forget we have a choice. When we're an autopilot, we forget to, you know, to touch, to get connected with our intuition, to get connected with that gut feeling that says, this doesn't feel right. You're pushing yourself too hard. You need to be more self-compassionate. Um, you need a day off. You know, let's not make the day off when you get sick. Let's make the day off, like, because you just need it now. you got enough going. Yeah. So I think that the more we have this dialogue the more we share with our peers, the trusting ones, not the psychic vampires, I think that it's it's really going to start this movement of mm-hmm. really the self-compassion that was needed a long time ago. And when you talk about um, the intuition and the things and the, the, the technology, I mean, the, I, the technology is even more blurred because we're not coming home even from the office. The office mm-hmm. is in you know the dining room or the, the, that mm-hmm. room, and it's still the same. But all of that, uh, we lose touch with ourselves. It's like we're living from the neck up, isn't it? And that inner knowing, the intuition, it's connecting with the body, connect with people, and and instead of living from here up. Right. I totally, totally agree. I mean, one of the things that I'm so big on, I can't remember who gave this to me, but I love it. And it's just, you know, it's really about leading from our hearts. And so, first of all, it starts with me and it ends with me. So what does that mean? It means that, you know, I love that chiropractor, uh, Dr. Mike uh, Kula says, you know, what would I choose if I loved myself in this moment? And I think that we need to get back to that, these daily check-ins, say, how am I feeling? 
You know, it, yeah. am I am I doing this mental gymnastics? Again? Am I constantly in overdrive? Therefore, I, it's robbing me of my joy. It's robbing yeah. me of of being in the precious present. You know, and I think that's where. I know there's a lot of things that are happening outside of our control. Toilet seat up is a toilet seat down. Is a toilet seat up? Is a toilet seat down. I mean, enough already. I know we're now to, back into our lockdown. And so then a few things open up and then they close again. I feel for people. There's definitely that it's a reality of feeling powerlessness. But what you were saying earlier, which is really important, and it's a number one thing for me, is that I must take 100% responsibility for my thoughts, my feelings, and my actions. So as a leader, it is critical that I am showing up and being the best power example I can be. You know, I can talk the talk as long as I want, but if I'm not walking it or at least trying to walk it, trying to embrace this self-compassion, this self-care, then tragically what's going to happen is that uh, um, people are going to, it's going to be a double-edged, you know, like a message like, okay, so she says that, but she's eating through her lunch. She says that, but she's sending me an email at 4 a.m. She says that, or he says yeah. that, but I can see that very obviously, you know, they haven't showered in about probably a week. <laughs> so uh, I, now you have a very, I, I, I love the framework of the four rooms and I want to unpack this by giving you some structure with that. But before we do, I just want to touch on our last conversation. You said something that really honestly concerned me. And it's that, that in the past, you know, they've said that one in three people will have some sort of mental health challenge. But you said the latest data is now is in terms of depression. Can you share that for our views? Like the right. scale of what we're dealing with now. Absolutely. So really a scientist that I've been following, uh, he's actually a professor from New York uh, University. He's had well over 10,000 hours of, of mindfulness training and instructing and facilitating. And what he's saying is, you know, that's the concern. That's what they're doing now with their assessments. And they're, they're finding it is one in two. So if we, if you, we were to sit within our family, 50% of them, if we were to sit within our team, 50% of them, if we were to sit into our communities or our cities, 50% of them will experience some form of depression. And that is alarming to me. And I yes. think that what, what really, for me, again, we know that, you know, there's an umbrella of anger. There's obviously, or sorry, an umbrella I meant to say of depression. And underneath it is all sorts of different emotions. Sometimes it's repressed anger, it's rejection, abandonment, could be a series of things. And what I'm finding, which is really scary also right now is, I'm getting yep. leaders coming to me where their 13 year olds are heads uh, for depression. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, there's the anxiety and depression is out of control. And yes. I really believe, uh, I'm just going to throw my two cents in and please understand I'm not an expert. I'm not a nutritionist, but I'm very, I think that sugar should be up there with cocaine addiction. I'm concerned about the fact that, you know, right now we have a seriously obese society and, you know, we need to take a look at our lifestyles and our habits. Don't get me wrong. I'm a chocolate nut, I like ice cream, all of that stuff. I think right now, again, during this reset, it's really important to take a look at our habits. I love when I read somewhere, you know, the choices you make today determine how you choose to die. So that's to me, so, whoa, in your face, right? The choices that I make today determine how I choose to die. And my family are not going to be leaning over me where I have all these different tubes inside of me and you know, I can see the grief stricken on their face. Um, to me, as I've said before, I'm going to be 102 and that morning I'll have gone out and taught a Pilates class and, you know, I've gone to do some volunteer work at the local you know, alternative high school and then I'll, you know, be with my family that afternoon and then I'll drift off to sleep and that's it for me, you know. Um, it sounds kind of funny saying it like that, but that the truth is it's the choices I'm making today that are helping that become a reality. Right. I don't want to be a burden on my family later on in life. And I think, you know, we, we treat our bodies like somehow they're going to live on forever. You know, and so this is a temple that we have here. And so, you know, when I get aches and pains, it's likely because there's something going on here um, or there's a stuckness here. So Absolutely. I need that inventory daily to check in with myself. Uh, when you were saying about my book, 
I'm truly grateful. Um, this wonderful indigenous um, man, uh, Gene Cliff, uh, you know, shared this with me. And I've been doing a body, mind, and spirit for many years prior uh, prior to this conversation. However, he just really packaged such a great way. And then I basically did my own spin on it, being a fitness instructor. Is that uh, you know, he said, Kate, in order for us to step into our power, in order for us to really own our purpose in order for us to show up, be the best version of ourselves, we need to enter each of these four rooms every single day. So I kind of just modified it. And of course, the first one is your mentally fit room. The second is your emotionally fit room. Your physically fit room is number three. And number four is your spiritually fit room. And to me, you know, if I would give any takeaways to anybody that's on this is that it's so important that we do that check-in every day because, and say, you know, where am I out of alignment? I'm feeling this kind of stacky or I'm feeling anxious. What's going on? Oh, you know what? My physically fit room, right? I have been having a little bit more caffeine. I'm having more sugar. Uh, I, I'm finding myself, my, my uh, sleep hygiene is not so great. I'm bringing my technology to the bedroom again. Um, so I think again, what we need to do is we need to take this important pause. This is yeah. a pause in history we may never get again. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to get back on that stress treadmill in the same intensity that I did before. I think yeah. it's really important. I want to be much more intentional. I want to be much more consciously aware and I want to be more mindful for myself and the people that I, I work with and my family. Uh, and I don't think I did that as, as effectively as I, I wish, as I thought I did uh, prior yeah. to all of this. Well, I, I, I love the way your book, you, you know, which I'll talk about mindfulness, but you actually give it a structure in looking at these mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. how, to, like mindfulness isn't just zing, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's about mm -hmm. being present. And so you give a structure for how you can use mindfulness effectively. Love the mug. <laughs> well, thank you. We we have a question here for Issa now before we jump into the rooms is how can you become more aware of your situation and personal health condition when you're in the midst of crisis and being pulled away in so many directions? Uh, I didn't realize how many priorities I had taken over, like had taken mm -hmm. over. And and I, I think we'll get into this with the rooms, but uh great question. Hits? Absolutely. Great question. And I think part of it is, is what you've already done, Teresa, which is beautiful, is you're taking the pause. You mm -hmm. see, um, our body is there to support us. You know, a great book that you might want to consider is by Louise Hay, and it's called You Can Heal Your Life. And in there, what Louise, and keep an open mind, but her belief system as is mine, that my physical ailments are directly connected to an emotional stuckness. So on the chart, you have on the left in alphabetical order, the physical ailments in the middle is the emotional stuckness. And then she has the affirmation to the far right. So first and foremost, these aches and pains, these conditions that I'm having, they didn't come out of nowhere. Oftentimes it's stress, it's, you know, disconnection from myself or my higher source, you know, so whatever that is. So I'll dig a little deeper in that. And I hope you, you uh, meet up with me uh, at the table, table number one afterwards, because I can really unpack that much more. But I think number one is, I call it the three A's. That is awareness, acceptance, and then action, Teresa. So awareness good for you you've got this awareness that things aren't working i want things to be different i deserve things to be different because you do teresa you do and then the second one is to be able to say okay so i've got to accept that if i knew better i would have done better so part of this is that self-compassion again right so then the a the final a is action so what am i now going to be thinking feeling and doing different to get a different result so i may not have the answers who has the answers? So that's where I want to ask for help. I guess I got to put a fourth A in there and ask for help. So great question and, and love to go deeper with you there, Teresa. I'd be happy to support you. Okay. So as we jump into the the, the mentally fit room, I just want to mention our friend Jen Spears saying she wants to take Pilates class from 102 year old Kate. <laughs> <laughs> You're on, Jen. You're on. <laughs> yeah. You're on. I'll dance with you then. That's I it. love it. So, I love it. Okay. So the mentally fit room. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, how we start our day creates our day. Yes. So what do I mean by that? How many people just think about who are on here right now? How many of you just press that, you know, uh, I don't even use an alarm. What do you call it? Um, sir, uh, 
the pause, not the pause button on your alarm. Snooze, snooze button. Snooze. Thank you, your snooze button, because I just kind of go with an internal clock. But unless, of course, I'm taking a flight, which I really wish I was. But anyway, that's a sidebar. <laughs> um, way out of here, somewhere on the sun. But so a lot of people touch the snooze button, or they jump out of bed, jump into the shower, or again, yeah, get the a few people off. are. Right. You can relate to that. Right. So it's kind of like that inner Venus, right? Hook me up, hook me up. And so I'm not judging anybody here. So part of what we need to do is we need to get more. Any here, anybody here got a kitty cat or a four legged baby at home? Can you put in the chat? Anybody here got a four legged baby? Um, Cause those family members, what do we notice about them when they get out of us? You know, they get out of that nap, they stretch, you know, it's beautiful to watch them. We could learn from them. So I've created the four rooms, the power four, and it's beautiful because that morning routine is simply number one is let's time to be mindful. It might be five minutes. It might be 10 minutes. You know, I realize our schedules are such that maybe we, well, that'd be great, but uh, you know, I don't have an hour. Well, I'm not suggesting take an hour, just take whatever you can get with your breath. The big part of mindfulness is just being with your breath, right? Being present in your body. Then the next thing is, is I've got to move my body. So you might be going, oh yeah, that's, you're one of those people, huh? No, listen, I became a fitness instructor. So I'd show up at the gym. Don't be putting me in that category. Um, so for me, it's now getting into routine. So now I know, thank goodness for my YMCA, big plug for YMCA, they're across Canada. They have like you have access to all sorts of classes, which is so sweet. And so I know that on Sunday night, I'm literally putting into my phone each class for four days that I'm going to be doing at 7 a.m., why? Because I need the discipline. I need the discipline, right? So you're going to move your body in whatever way that is. Give yourself a timeline. Even if it's, I'm going to be the kitty cat or I'm going to be the dog and I'm going to stretch. Maybe it's, you're going to do a little Pilates. Okay. A little plug for Pilates because I'm a fan of Pilates. Uh, or maybe you're going to go for a walk. Walking is so good right now for our mental health. Mm -hmm. um, third thing, of course, is sorry. Sorry. The second thing is also while you're moving your body, I'd love for you to be thinking about what am I most proud of that I did the day before? Could you put that in the chat? I would love to see what people say. One thing that you're most proud yeah. of that you accomplished. What, right now, before. take a look back at yesterday. What are you the most proud of? Type it into the chat. Let's see. Okay, yesterday, so take you just that moment to think about that and mm -hmm. to be present. And God Maybe. just got out for a bike ride. Oh, good for you. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, and, and that's something Michelle said too, is to be active every day, right? Yeah. It was, yes. it's, it's that just, energy it, part. Right, sometimes we think, oh, well, I'm, that's them, that's that person. Okay, Jen, what'd she say? I don't have my eyes in, sorry. So uh, Liz, is it Liz was saying quality time, thrifting with her daughter. Oh, I love uh, it. Jen, Jen was, went for a walk, even though it was cold. She'd come to Nova Scotia, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Jen. <laughs> and Terry, uh, took the dogs for a walk instead of sitting on the couch. So again, a lot of active, getting out. Beautiful, loving yeah, it, loving yeah. this. I wanna give a quick shout out to Liz. Liz is one of my assistants and today administration day and she is my powerhouse. I would be lost without her. <laughs> need to just say that. Um, so the third thing of the four, the power of four is this, is that what we really need to be doing is we need to be getting really crystal clear about um, how we wanna show up. How do we want to show up in our lives? You know, mm -hmm. how, how do I want to be? So let's be intentional. So before each meeting, before every email, just take that couple seconds and say, okay, so what is it that I want to infuse here? The world needs kindness. You deserve kindness. Yeah. So it's important that we're very intentional right now. Because I don't know about you, if I tend to respond too quickly and I haven't slept well and I'm exhausted, I could be in an overreaction and emotions destroy intelligence. Anybody here ever done that where they had to get the pooper scooper out? Because afterwards they thought, oh, I got to put my foot in my mouth next time and then I won't be in trouble. Anybody give me a thumbs up if you've ever had that experience where you in fact have said something out of line. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, I mean, we've all done it, right? So emotions destroy intelligence. So what do we do? We need to, in order to have that filter, we have to take a step back, right? We have to take that step back. It's so important. And, and then- You know, the thing about that is before COVID, they, I've found large bureaucratic organizations I've been in that let you schedule other people into meetings. Mm -hmm. They 
foster because you don't have zero time because you're always late they they actually prepare lateness because you know you they book you right after another meeting but they don't notice you've got 20 minute travel time right you're guaranteed right. to be late so you forget five minutes you're already mm -hmm. 20 minutes late before you and now we do that with zoom meetings off one zoom onto another right. On. Right. You're exactly right. And I think that what you're saying is really important from an organizational perspective. As a senior leader, it is our responsibility to make sure that we're not doing that. Like, I love when you're saying that they're perpetuating because it's important. And this is where I'm trying to help the leaders that I work with on a one on one is to be able to help them find their voice, own their power to say, hey, you know what? I know we've you know, our budget has changed. It's it's well, it's gone down the tubes in some ways and I'm supposed to do more with less. But I need you to tell me. What are my top priorities so that I don't walk around feeling guilty all of the time? Because that's the tragedy is that right now we have got guilt is this overwhelming. Um, it's kind of like it's it's kind of there constantly. Right. And it's robbing you of joy. It's robbing you of your successes because the fact that you're even in this and you're watching this right now tells me that you are saying, hey, yes. I deserve to be a part of this and to to really get some of these tips on how to prevent burnout and to build my mental health so that I I feel more positive and more, you know, that it's, you know, there's more hope in the world. Right. So, and I like that you've got so much focus in the emotionally fit room on mm -hmm. both guilt and boundaries. Yes. And they're very important because I think for me, uh, I can't speak for for a man only because I'm a woman, but I just know for myself when I was born, let me tell you. I had it right, I think it was stapled, not even a little bow. It was stapled to my big toe that just said, you're gonna feel guilty for the rest of your life uh, because there's gonna be somebody that you're not gonna be depositing to or helping. And it truthfully has been uh, one of my biggest, um, I won't say challenges because language matters to me, However, it's been one of the things I've had to work on is that this is this is the one. Please write this down if you're someone who experiences guilt. And that is who is responsible for this. So during this great reset, what I realized was, holy guacamole, I'm taking on their stuff. I'm, I, I'm trying to be this great mom or I'm trying to be this great friend or I'm trying to be this great daughter, at, but at my own expense. So I've decided yeah. that I no longer be the sacrificial lamb. So... Um, so I'm firing myself. So part of the, what helps with the guilt is who's responsible for this and to do that reality check. And I find also with guilt, it's really important to talk to someone you trust, Ravi, because sometimes we could be carrying something and the other person holds up a mirror and goes, well, I'm not quite seeing it the way you're seeing it, Kate. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty, this is pretty skewed right now. And if I'm coming from fatigue, if I'm coming from overwhelm, or if my self-esteem is lower, uh, I'm going to now, so that little mistake I made, oh my gosh, like, you yes. know, move over. I'm, I'm, I'm in certain, you don't want to be around me kind of thing, because it's just, I feel so bad about myself. And I think that forgiveness piece, which I talk about in the book is so important that we forgive ourselves. We're human, you know, it's huge, it's huge, right? It's huge. Yeah. And, and, uh... and we the best we can. So let's treat yeah. ourselves the way we would our dogs. Let's do it the way we treat our cats, the way we treat our children, the way we treat our best friend, the way we treat our partners. I think that we have to start to be kinder and say, you know, um, I've got this, um, I can't pull it out because if I do, my whole bookshelf will come down, but it basically says, stop it. So I'm giving homework already to people. You got to check out the Bob Newhart. Please understand on the YouTube, it's not politically correct. It's done many years ago, but it just illustrates the stop it. So, okay. So I feel guilty. Is this serving me well? No. So stop it. Am I getting into this old story of negativity about how I'm not good enough? I'm not worthy enough, or I'm not smart enough. You know, stop it. Like just, I need to set it free and remind myself who I am because I'm guaranteed every one of us is a powerhouse. Not when you lose weight, not when you get the letters behind your name, not when you get more money in your bank account, not when you get a prettier house, not when you get a better partner, not when, no, you already are a powerhouse. Anything else is just extra. Reminds me of a quote by Jim Carrey he says, said that, uh, I wish everyone could have a million dollars so that they know that that's not the answer yeah. oh beautiful oh isn't that wonderful or have all the goals that they wanted all the things they want so that they know that's not the answer oh, that's so with the, 
physically fit room, we already talked about activity, but something you dive into there are stress behaviors. Yes. It's important to know how we protect ourselves under stress. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by that? So it's important to know, you know, how do I respond? You know, am I somebody who goes into shark behavior? Do I become dominant? And dominant doesn't have to be yelling. Dominant can be my posturing. Maybe I'm standing over top of somebody. Dominant can be, you know, like I've got this person in my life. Thank goodness it's not my husband. But this person in my life that does this sort of thing. I mean, physically, right? And I can even see her doing it. Okay, it's my mom. So, you know, and so, uh, and you know, she doesn't have technology or anything like that. So I can even feel it coming through. And I know she doesn't mean it. And she doesn't do it all the time. But it's like, oh, I want to lose my stuff because it's like, that's domination. And so right away, what happens is people then start to shut down. They don't safe with you. Or you may be the turtle. Maybe you're that person that says yes, but you really feel no. And guess what? You don't meet the deadline. So that actually becomes <laughs> passive aggressive. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, you know, or maybe you're somebody that you need time to kind of take away what's just happened, this stressful situation, and you need to kind of, you know, you need to reflect on it. And that's totally fine. Uh, I'm going to be really honest with you that if I'm tired, I could either be a wet noodle, Ravi, which means that I could be, I could be crying in conversation, not with clients, um, but, you know, think, <laughs> some sense of professionalism. Uh, however, I'm talking more with family. And then, or I could be like the pit bull, right? Without the lipstick, right? Without the lipstick. So for me, I've got to be really in check because being tired is something that is a trigger for me. I know that like my husband can have five hours of sleep a night and he's good to go. He's waking up in the morning and he's, you know, 630, he's ready to go. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, how did I, how did this happen? Like, you know, how did, how did I marry you and you're so perky? And yet once I get going and I have my exercise class, then I'm good. But what I'm saying though, is that it's really, really important to know how do you self-protect um, so are you someone that tends to isolate? Are you tend to someone that you tend to overreact? Are you somebody that puts your hand up? Oh, sure. I can bake those three dozen cookies. Sure. You know, um, even though you really, what you need is a, someone to send you out a, a life, uh, jacket, you know, cause you're, you're drowning. But I think it's real important to say, especially when we know, and we do know to some degree, okay, I've got a taxes coming up. Oh gosh, for those people who didn't know it's April 30th. So for the personal taxes, in case you missed that, um, sort of put you under stress. But um, so for me, it's like taxes can freak people out or different things. I know it's not my favorite thing for sure. Um, even though I have a nice accountant, I don't really like visiting them. And so for me, it's like, okay, so if I know that in advance, what sort of things do I need to put in place? What do I need to go of so I can focus in on this? What do I need to start to make sure I'm doing, that I'm doing those walks, I'm doing the exercise, I'm eating healthier, I'm minimizing my sugar. You know, I remember when my dad had his heart attack, um, you know, the doctor, and I always love saying this, my dad's name is Jim Collins. Why is that important? Because, well, there's an author named Jim Collins. And I was kind of hoping that somehow I could tag on behind him, but it didn't quite work out. But anyway, sidebar. <laughs> Is that, um, so the way he said was, Jim, if you can minimize these three white deaths and you can guess what they are, and I'd love to see what people say, what are the three white deaths that we need to minimize or avoid that will Let's reduce see that our, in the chat, folks. Reduce our depression, reduce that sense of hopelessness. <laughs> what Jen said, I can only imagine. Jen said snow. <laughs> I knew she'd say something. Mm -hmm. And Teresa's going sugar and flour. So she's, I think, yes. got a couple of them. You're on it. What's the third one? It's salt. That would be salt. Mm -hmm. So since my son was little, I was always getting him to read the first three ingredients. That's the dominant ingredients in whatever you put in your mouth. They can tell you it's healthy. They can tell you it's this. They can tell you it's that. But what's the first three to five ingredients in anything that we're eating? And that's really important. And I think that right now more than ever, like I'm loving, I'm hearing people say they're going to have a garden when they never had one before, whether it's on the ledge in the kitchen, whether it's in their backyard, whether on their deck, like I celebrate that. I think that's yeah. really fantastic. Um, 
I think, again, I, I can't, and I know we've heard people say this, but it is so critical. We are in a sleep crisis right now. We need to improve our sleep hygiene. What do I mean? No different than you were a kid. You know, there was this certain routine, or maybe it didn't happen in your family. Maybe it was someone else's family. But, you know, there's that certain routine that, you know, we know the brain knows, okay, so this is going to happen, then this is going to happen. Oh, and now I'm going to wind. You know, I have been so... Um, a ritualistic with my sleep because I know that sleep really matters to me because I can either be really on and focused or I can be completely unfocused and there's several squirrels going by. <laughs> so for me, I know that especially if I have a report or I've got something that I've got to really, um, something I've got to send out to a client or to be present, particularly right now when people are suffering so much, it's important. My room is, our room is dark. Um, that there is, there's no clock. I can't see anything. There's no technology, no TV. Um, and so it really serves me well. So if you're out there and you're someone that says, oh, what do you mean? No TV in the bedroom. I'm just going to ask you just maybe in, invite you to consider, would you try maybe seven days, seven days of no TV in the bedroom and maybe watch it out in the living room or the rec room or wherever you, you watch it. And then maybe just give yourself a break and see if there's a difference. Just to thought. It out. Yeah. yeah. So just to uh, keep an eye on time to make sure we're, we're okay here, that the last room that you have, the spiritually fit room, mm -hmm. you touch on some of the things that um, a, a number of people do. Uh, there's three pillars that jumped out to me with gratitude, mm -hmm. mindfulness, and joy. Mm -hmm. uh, the question that I had here is, you know, in the book, you go through it in a certain order, the mentally, then the emotionally, then the physically. Is there an order or is that, that you find helps or does it matter where you start? Because I'm wondering if someone is starting trying to be mindful, but yet they're dealing with all the stuff, the guilt, the, the other elements from the emotionally fit, emotionally fit room that's, that hasn't been addressed or do you need it's different with Beautiful every question. question? Beautiful question. I have put them in order for a reason because I do believe it starts here. And then it ends here and then it you know becomes physical whether it be an ailment or i feel more energized or more focused uh and so so it's a good question i would say the invitation to everyone is to literally check in and say okay which room needs my attention which room has kind of that police the yellow um you know st that stuff that says do not enter right or because you haven't been in it for so long which ones maybe have like cobwebs everywhere because you haven't spent time there or maybe it's a physical thing as Teresa was saying like I know a lot of people are experiencing physical ailments right now so your our body's there to tell us something's out of alignment I was intentional Ruby, to put spiritually fit room at the bottom because to okay. me it's the base it's the base of the house so when you think of a house that foundation has to be solid so whatever spiritually fit means to you, for me, it happens to be God. Some people could be good early direction, could be higher power, um, could it be Buddha. It could be whatever. It could be creator, spirit, uh, mother nature. Uh, it could be people, you know, maybe somebody that, an un someone who's given you unconditional love. For me, it's so critical that I connect with my source every day. Because you mm -hmm. see, even be before I came on today, I meditated and it's like, how can I serve? Let me come from a place of being humble versus my ego because my ego wants to get in there and you know i want to sound bright and i want to do all this and being humble allows me to be vulnerable allows me to show my authentic self and and with its work everything else and my my humanness so for me you're right i think it is important the gratitude i need to be grateful every day um and that is specifically you know like earlier today i just went and gave my husband a big hug and like thank you thank you for being you you know, I just think that, um, like, I don't know how much time I've got, right? So to me, it's important that I share with the people that I love, that they matter to me. And also, I believe in every situation, there is a silver lining. There is a silver lining, I believe. And I've been through a lot of stuff, like a lot of people. Um, however, I have to hang on to that hope. Uh, I think also with the idea of, you know, this is one thing I would love for people to answer is, and maybe we could close with this, is that what brings you joy? I think we need to ask ourselves, we need to have a joy list, an ongoing joy list that we keep adding to. Like, I love being chased, not by a burglar, please understand, and nobody with a mask. But I love it when our four-legged baby was alive, when I'd play hide and seek and he would go to find me. Like, I know it's so silly, but my heart would be going to the point where I'd have to go, okay, here I am. 
here I am. <laughs> so what is it I'd love to see from people? What brings you joy? Is it eating a hot fudge sundae? Maybe it's that you're, you know, having a hot bath. Maybe you're playing with your kids or your grandkids. Maybe you're just feeling the sun on your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you let's know? see. The I, and, and also you've got to be adaptable because you know me. One of my biggest joy is dance. And mm -hmm. that I've lost with the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, so uh, for the most part, right? So mm -hmm. now I've had to, another one is to be by the water, but by nature. So hiking more, I've been doing way more of that, of the beach walks and all of that well, to different. nourish me because I, I don't have the dance. Right. I love that you're doing Robbie, What are people saying? I'd love to see what they're doing. That what family. Love it. Time with family, being outdoors, writing or just creating something. And Teresa, just put in the chat if we answered your question. I thought I had a feeling we would as we went through the four rooms, but- uh, Beautiful, that's uh, great. So yeah, smell of salt air. Oh, I like that one. Well, I have to fly to go do that. <laughs> but I'm in, I love it that you get salt air. Good for you. Yeah, and actually I think after we're done with this, I'm gonna play hooky and drive half an hour to the beach for a walk. Good for you, good for you. I'm it's a gorgeous it. day here, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, it is? Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna to have to do a snow angel. I think that's what's gonna be on my <laughs> I'll yeah. do a sand angel. <laughs> Sounds good. So, you take a picture and I'll take a picture. <laughs> so here's one key word that you mentioned was about being vulnerable. And uh, this is, I, I'd like to share how Kate has found uh, her ground to enable her to, um, to be vulnerable is she would like your feedback on this session directly not, beyond the, the, all the wonderful things you've shared in the chat. And what we're going to ask is after we finish, if she, now she's going to be at table one. So if, if you've got questions, you can uh, ask questions there. Uh, but if you could go to her booth and she's got a tag there to ask you for feedback on this session. So she'd really like, and I, and I applaud you for the vulnerability there in doing that. That Thank is uh, I want to give a little care to people too. There's a link there. So it's not like you have to say face to face. Okay. You were great at this. You sucked at that. That's not what it's about. It's actually about my sister who's on here, Liz, which I'm so grateful that she was able to join us. She's from down East too. Um, oh, is and she? Hi Liz. Liz, share where you're from, darling. I'm hoping okay. she's still there. I'm not sure. So, so what I want to say is it's a link, and what we're going to be doing is a draw. So we're going to be um, giving out some free uh, Starbucks online cards so you can treat yourself and do something nice for you. Awesome. That's wonderful. So if I can close with hey. one thing, Ravi, I just yeah. want to say that for anybody that's here, thanks so much for coming. You know, you're so worth it. And I just want to say be kinder to yourself. Ask yourself every day, you know, how can I be compassionate with me? What act of kindness can I give to myself? See, I'm all about the, the gratitude and the act of kindness externally. However, I do believe it needs to start with us first. So as I'm filling up my fountain of wealth, my fountain of wellness, my fountain of resiliency, it's really important. Then I'm able to give it out because it's coming from a place of meanness. So I just wanted to say, this has been such a, a delightful experience. Thank you so much, Ravi, for inviting me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. And I'm going to raise, take your challenge and raise it one more. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it helps us not just to mentally do it, but to, you know, state it and to share it. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to challenge you all to do is to go to the social lounge, mm -hmm. grab a table, sit at a table, make a new friend and tell them what you're going to do. Oh, I love it. Which room, right? Which room are you going to take oh, action it, on? Let's yeah, do it. Which room? Pick one thing that you're going to do. Oh. Go to the social lounge, find a friend and, and tell them what you're going to do. Let's support each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to let you guys, and remember to go to uh, Kate's booth as well before you leave. This venue is going to be open for a while after. Uh, so you can come to the social lounge, chat with Kate, chat with each other, and go to her booth. Uh, remember, too, that the, tomorrow we've got Patricia Morgan, who has again been here sharing notes in the main chat, in the main feed. Thank you so, so much. much. That is such a gracious gift oh. you've given. Um, and the VIP... Um, uh, workshop 
that is coming on. These four days, I'm bringing you four incredible experts. On May 2nd, I'm going to be sharing with you both the five journey that I have found to what I call soul engineering your life to live more intentionally and purposefully. And it, and it really is so much parallel with your rooms there. That there's a lot of connection. Um, and to show some, uh, to walk out of there, it's a workshop. You will be learning these approaches to literally turn off your self-talk whenever you want to be able to access your intuition. These are some of the first uh, of those five steps to give you some hands-on resources. So just go to ravitangri.com slash VIP and you can uh, sign up there.